in Hong Kong was to try and put maximum pressure to get modalities agreed across the two goods chapters. Actually, now it's inimical to get equality. So I think, I think slowly there's starting to be some greater convergence around procedure. I think the clustering idea, as long as it's balanced, uh, I mean, it's not going to go anywhere if it's unbalanced. Uh, and as long as it does include mode four, um, I myself, as the minister of a small but very active trading country, am becoming increasingly presented as I tour around some fantastic New Zealand companies, just how important it is for them to get their installers, their maintenance people, into anything that's associated with delivery of their goods. And I think that's the direction we've got to go. So there's some general things. What I'm saying here is I think I'd be very typical of people who are totally committed to the system but haven't been deeply involved personally in services, who are starting now to understand what a shortcoming that has been, and we're ready to move. In terms of TPP, well, um, very, I mean, I'm going to bore you with a history lesson as to where this came from, but I think we've got to step back a little bit and understand what's going on in the Asia Pacific beyond the bigger picture issue, which is the conventional one that we all understand. That this is an extraordinary process of trade and investment integration going on in the Asia Pacific that is delivering untold gains to untold millions of people particularly in the large developing countries, for all the reasons that everyone, well, you wouldn't be in this room if you didn't know that story, so we don't need to talk about that biggest picture. But behind that, if you reflect on, on the old debate led so intriguingly by two great American economists, Dr. Fred Bergston, possibly even in the room, I don't know whether you're in the room, Fred, or not tonight, uh, at the moment, certainly central to this event, uh, and Bagwati, you know, I, I mean, Whatever, whoever was right, quote unquote, historically, uh, we've moved on since then. And if you looked at the classical attacks on RTAs from Bagwati and Co., um, well, actually, there was something to address them. So, what is going on in the Asia Pacific is that there was a, a definite tendency to do low quality FTAs in the 90s. Since then, I would argue, with some exceptions, there's been a, what I call a flight to quality. I mean, if you look at the recent FTAs that we've been involved in, and we've committed, though we are so strongly to the WTO, I'm conscious that our ambassador sitting over there, Honorable Right Honorable Mike Moore, former Director General for the WTO, I mean, if that doesn't indicate a commitment, I don't know what does, but um, although we've been totally committed to WTO, we haven't sat down on our political backsides and waited uh, for God up here. So we've been very active on the FTA front. And the FTAs that we've been negotiating, most recently with these guys, the New Zealand-Malaysia FTA, is a flight to quality. I mean, it's 100% effectively uh, one unimportant uh, exception that's there for cultural reasons to do with alcohol. And that's totally legit. And. Um, a good services package in that. Um, our FTAs more recently have all been high quality. The FTA that we have with China, New Zealand's the only developed country in the world to have an FTA with China. 99% of our exports in goods. The only part of the deal that's not there is to do with the Chinese protocol of accession and a particular technical provision relating to some forestry islands, which I won't bore you with. So I'm arguing that actually, if we look at the Asia Pacific, and we think about the sort of critique of FTAs, that issue is being addressed. The second, and, and TPP has got to be in that space. I mean, TPP is a fascinating endeavor. I mean, in the first and most obvious sense, because it involves the preeminent economy of the world, the United States. But, I mean, it's got to, it's, it, it's not coming into an empty space here. There's, there's already high level of competition here, and it's, pretty quite good quality. The second interesting thing that's happening to FTAs, if we look at the Asia Pacific, is what I call the trend towards convergent FTAs. So if we go back again to the critique, the spaghetti in the bowl critique, I don't think I need to define this for this quality of audience. Uh, yeah, we're, we're cleaning up after the event. So if you look at the um, very interesting 
plurilateral FTA in Australia and New Zealand to forge with the whole of ASEAN. So this is a, a comprehensive FTA between New Zealand and Australia and the 10 countries of Southeast Asia, essentially merging two geographically contiguous FTAs, the CER agreement that is, was in its day absolutely the gold standard of FTAs uh, with the FTA of the Southeast Asian countries. And we're putting it together. Look at the rules of origin, they're region wide. We are addressing that concern that academics and traders had over too many multiple rules of origin through now putting together the building blocks into convergent FTAs. So what I'm saying is that we step back from the heat of battle and look at what's happening in the Asia Pacific, it is quite clear to me that um, we're moving in a good direction, that the quality has improved over recent years, and then again, we're moving towards drawing them in together so that the concentric rings, if you like, of liberalization are beginning to merge. And the long-term objective is clear. I mean, the long-term objective is an FTA of the Asia-Pacific region. <coughs> and the building blocks are in place, at least in part. Now, TPP, well, it's up to us, isn't it? Um, we're really pleased that our Malaysian colleagues um, are extremely interested in in this, and uh, if our experience of negotiating uh, with Mustafa and uh, his his team as any guide, um, we know that Malaysia is capable of high quality uh, FTAs. Um, this would be because it involves the United States, uh, a huge development if we can pull this together. We're really pleased that President Obama has shown commitment and leadership on this, and we want to take it forward now. There's all manner of problems. I, you know, I, I was, gave a speech the other day and I said, you know, I have never in 30 years of being a negotiator been involved in a quote, easy trade negotiation. And I gave an example of the negotiation I just concluded recently with Hong Kong. You might think, what on earth could New Zealand and Hong Kong have that would be difficult to negotiate? Well, I'll tell you, in the services negotiation, it got very difficult, you know, at the end. But that's all right, that's the name of the game. So. The media will focus and has in TPP focused on the problems. We all know what they are, and they exist in part in the traditional goods area. We've got to find a track away through that. I'm confident uh, that provided we maintain strategic unity of vision, we can do that. And I think, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll leave the 21st century stuff perhaps to Demetrius uh, to talk about, so we don't all say exactly the, the same thing, but I know that he is personally and professionally seized of this. We have an opportunity here, I think, to uh, live up to our own rhetoric, to actually put down on the table a template for trade and investment integration with the preeminent economy of the world uh, that actually may find some pathways through. And I, I'm hoping that in services in particular, uh, that this will be you know, a trailblazing agreement. So I'll sort of uh, stop at that point before, and leave it perhaps to, to my friend and professional colleague, Demetrius, to develop the the, the theory a little bit along those lines. Well, thank you. It's First of all, thank you CSI, Bob, John, and, and everybody who put this together. This is an amazing summit uh, that has become an annual event, and it's so important to focus on the services sector and on the contribution that it makes, not just to the U.S. economy, but the global economy. It's, it's just the panel discussions, the speeches, it all provides an opportunity for us to gather and listen and share views. So. Um, thanks to everybody for putting this together. It's a, an honor for me to sit on, on a panel with uh, two ministers that I've had the fortune of uh, working closely with over the past year on bilateral and regional issues. Um, and I'm also, you know, in spite of how much I complain to many of you about, you know, how tired I am or this or that, it is a, it's such a privilege to be able to fo uh, focus on a day-to-day -day basis professionally on <coughs> the Asia Pacific region. There is so much going on. There's so much going on in the, in the services sector in particular. The opportunities in the services sector are so huge. Um, and there's a lot of good news uh, to tell uh, as well. You know, bilaterally, you know, you all know that the president uh, directed about